Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, crime, I want to talk about Vanishing Ladies by Ed McBain, my very favourite crime writer. I say McBain's my favourite crime writer, but actually he's my favourite writer, primarily for his 87th Precinct series, which is just phenomenal, um, and which, if you like crime at all, you should read. Um, so it's over 50 novels written between the, the 50s and the early 2000s um, that really established the police procedural genre um, and is just a, a fantastic body of, of work um, with some great mysteries in there, some great characters. Um, just all round a fantastic achievement um, for, for any writer. Um, but yeah, McBain is, is a, just a, a hugely talented writer of popular fiction. Um, so born um, Salvatore Lombido, so American, but um, born to Italian immigrants. Um, later changed his name to Evan Hunter. Um, and as, as Evan Hunter um, most famously wrote The Blackboard Jungle, um, also wrote the screenplay for Hitchcock's film of Daphne du Maurier's The Birds um, and a bunch of other novels as well. So, so published a lot of novels as, as Evan Hunter, um, but is best known as McBain, primarily for, as I say, for the Ace of Precinct series. Also wrote another series about a lawyer um, called Matthew Hope um, as Ed McBain um, and a few standalones as well, um, but also went under other pseudonyms during his career. Um, and this book, Vanishing Ladies, was originally published under the name Richard Marsden um, in 1957, which was around the time the first um, Ace of Precinct books came out. So I think the first one came out in 55 or 56, and he was up to about book three or four in the series by the time this was published. Um, and it may be that that's why um, he chose, or the publishers chose for it to be published under a pseudonym, um, so that it didn't get confused with the 87th Precinct series. Um, so this is a paperback copy I've had for um, a while. I think I got it off eBay a while ago, um, but hadn't read because I've been working my way through the 87th Precinct books. Um, so those have kind of been my priority. Um, but now that I've finished that series, I picked this one up. And boy, is it good. It's so good. Um, so for, given that this was written, you know, pretty early on in his career, um, I think his first books were published in the early 50s. So this was only five years after that, albeit it was after The Blackboard Jungle, which was, you know, really his breakthrough book. Um, but it's just fantastic and feels very modern as well. So, so it's about a guy called Phil Colby, who's a like a big city cop, um, who's travelling with his fiance um, for a, a kind of weekend, long weekend stay away um, in... Uh, kind of small town in America where she grew up. Um, I think the town's called Sullivan's Point or something like that. Um, so they, they're travelling there. They have some trouble on the way to um, on the way to the town in that he gets pulled over by this small town cop um, who says he was speeding, which, which Phil is insistent he wasn't. And that kind of slows them down a bit. Um, so eventually they turn up in this town at night rather than during the day. Um, and they struggle to find anywhere to stay. So they end up in this slightly dodgy um, motel. Fant fantastically, because it's set in the 50s and they're um, very upright young people, um, they have separate rooms at the motel, separate cabins at the motel, um, because they are engaged but not yet married. Um, and very quickly, the plot kicks into gear. Um, Phil um, goes to take a shower, goes back to his cabin, um, and finds that there's a um, a young prostitute in the cabin who tries to seduce him. Um, he then finds um, some bloodstains in the cabin. Um, he then um, manages to get rid of the prostitute and goes to check on his fiance and finds that she's disappeared. Um, and then the prostitute disappears as well. And from there, um, the plot just goes at a million miles an hour um, and has got that kind of immediate hook um, that's fantastic in this sort of standalone mystery novel that just immediately pulls you in and I was completely grabbed by it straight away and just couldn't put it down I think I've read it pretty much cover to cover in one go um, it's just hugely engrossing um, and as the plot develops and you find out there's a bit more to this small town than than you thought um, which is probably what you'd expect to be honest with you but yeah you find out there's a bit more going on and it ends up being not unlike David Lynch's film Blue Velvet, 
in that it kind of really digs into the, the underbelly of, of small town America. Um, so yeah, just fantastically enjoyable, um, really gripping. It really hangs together well as a story, despite the fact it twists and turns all over the place, it's always convincing. Um, and Phil is a really solid um, central character. So he's a bit cliched in that, you know, he's kind of a stand up cop kind of a guy. Um, but he really works as, as a character. And what's really fascinating about this book is um, the way it's written. So I have a bit of a bugbear with modern uh, mystery novels that overuse the technique of having multiple first person narrators. Um, it's something you see like all every other you know every other domestic noir nowadays has that, and I think the reason for that is the huge success of of Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl, which I think is an absolutely brilliant book, which does the multiple first person narrator thing and does it really really well. It really makes sense in that book, and it really adds to the book. Whereas in in many other books where you see it, it feels like a gimmick, doesn't really add anything. Um, and, and often doesn't really make sense. You can't really figure out why the writer's done it. Um, so McBain does that in this book, but he does it in a really clever way. So actually, the first half of the book, which is written from Phil Colby's perspective, um, is basically a police report. So it's him, um, it's his statement to the police about everything that's gone on. So it actually makes perfect sense for it to be written in the first person. Um, Later on in the book, and I'll try not to give too much away, but another character gets involved and they also write a report um, or give a statement about their experiences, which fantastically gives a completely different slant on some of the things that Phil's told you. Um, but again, because it because of the way it's written, makes perfect sense and, and is very cleverly done. And then at the end, um, you then get a third... A, 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 bit that's written in the third person um, that involves both of those characters and it's just a it ends up being just a delight this little um it's almost like an afterword or, or epilogue at the end um where you see both of these characters who you've seen so with both these characters you've seen that you know you've heard their internal um thinking about things you've seen from you know, from the first person, their opinion of the other character. And then at the end, you get to see both characters from a, from a third person or, you know, from the, from the invisible narrator's perspective. And it's, it's just delightful. It's really, really clever writing. And, and I, you know, I know that, um, you know, Gillian Flynn certainly wasn't the first person to do the first, you know, multiple first person writers. It, it's, it's something that's happened, you know, in fiction going back centuries. Um, but I think it was probably fairly rare in genre fiction. And and for McBain to have done it so brilliantly in, in what was an early book for him, I think is just wonderful and a real testament to what a fantastic crime writer he is. Um, so yeah, if you if you fancy checking out McBain um, and you don't want to dive into a 50 plus book series like the 87th Precinct series, um, then I would definitely recommend this. I think it's out of print in paperback, but it is available on Kindle. Um, the Mysterious Press, which is a, a fantastic imprint run by Otto Penzler. Um, so they've got a, a Kindle version of it out. And it's just a really gripping, entertaining crime novel, um, as I say, from the 50s. So it's, you know, it's getting on for 70 years old now, um, but reads like a very modern book, um, but has, because it's set in the 50s, there's some lovely kind of touches that you just wouldn't get nowadays in terms of um you know the lives that these people live like for example the fact that the um that the, the main character and his fiance get separate cabins at the motel um which and, and if they didn't do that the whole book would fall apart so it's it's lovely that they do it and that it kind of makes sense um given that the book was written in the 50s so yeah thoroughly recommend it check it out on kindle if you like the sound of it um and yeah, if it's your first taste of McBain, I can pretty much guarantee you'll come back for more because this is a, a really first rate book by him. As always, hope that was interesting and useful. Um, hope you're all safe and well um, and dodging Omicron. Um, and I will speak to you again soon. Cheerio.